Welcome to Power Charting. We have a very special episode for you today. We have with us Andrew Cardwell, Dr. RSI, who is here to conduct an RSI workshop. Certainly one of the most compelling and interesting indicators out there. And Dr. RSI, Andrew, is going to talk about his RSI Edge method. And so, Andrew, welcome to the program. Good to be with you, Brewies, as always. It's it's always fun to have you here. And yeah, uh, we always have we, a really good time. Yes, we inform, educate, and a little entertainment, too. That's right. And so here's Andrew's contact information. You are absolutely going to want to have this because when we get to the edge of this uh, 30 minutes together, you're going to go, gosh, you know, I didn't know RSI could work like this. I want to know more. So with that, Andrew, uh, welcome to the program. You've been doing this for like 40 years. You've created this incredible RSI edge methodology, and you have students all over the world that are uh, using your methodology to very successfully trade. Well, what I am I'm proud of is 70% of my students are referred by private students. So I know it's been helpful for them. Fantastic. Well, I can't wait to get started. So let's not waste another second uh, in the intro part. Let's get onto your screen. Hold on. I'm going to pause for a minute. We're going to give Andrew the screen. Okay, Andrew, you are going to share with us some of the principles of the Cardwell RSI Edge method. There's a whole lot more material here than we can cover in the time that we have, but uh, get us started. Show us how to use the uh, RSI Edge. Okay, well, first thing I want to say is I've uh, been around for, I feel like a dinosaur sometimes, over 40 years. I've taught my work and my approach uh, through my coursework, which if you go to the website, you'll get more information on that. And um, I'm going to use a couple of the slides from the PowerPoint presentation, which I teach. Uh, this, but this is the first one, trading with the Cardwell RSI Edge. In fact, I had one of my clients uh, and students from years ago gave me the name for my website, CardwellRSIEdge.com. And uh, I broke it into two sessions, basic and advanced. I had everyone from brand new traders to technical analysts to brokerage firms to money managers. And even when my basic was over, they said, I've learned more in two days with you than I know about RSI. I've learned about RSI in 10 years. Uh, this first one, trading with the edge, all men created equal. Some just work harder in the preseason. My preseason was 10 years. And I call it the preseason because I did it all without a computer. And um, all I got was the end of the day, got the closing price, calculated the RSI values, plotted it on graph paper. So I taught myself pattern recognition. I taught myself range rules because um, everybody uses 70 and 30. That's Wells's original work. And I still look at those values, but I shifted it. 10 points to the upside, it made it 80 and 40 for uptrends, 60 and 20 for downtrends. And we'll go through a couple other charts, but I just wanted to go through a couple of these slides with you to give you an idea of how powerful the RSI is. I say RSI may stand for relative strength index, but it also really stands for really super indicator. To me, markets are based on price, momentum, time and sentiment, I call primotus. And the RSI is the only one that gives you something from each one of those things that you really need, price, momentum, time, and sentiment. You can use it as a sentiment tool. You can use it as a trend analysis tool. And what I teach is how to identify trend, recognize trend change, and the best part of it, how to set price objectives in the future that when the market closes above that level helps to confirm that trend is underway. Uh, the other thing it does is 
gives you the ability to uh, base your analysis on closing prices, which is the most important price of the day based on where your position is. So if you know if you're winning or losing. But I also use it to draw trend lines on the bar chart based on the RSI points that help you stay with a trade longer. And this uh, section here, combining range analysis with moving averages, how to know when it's accelerating in the current trend. But these price forecasting and positive and negative reversals, uh, that's the true star, I guess, in the RSI edge approach. When you can forecast what the price is going to be, see it close above it to confirm the trend is there, you can draw a trend line. And I also use moving averages on it. So it's a complete, um, it's 40 years of work, I guess. When I started teaching, I blew people away because I said, the bullish and bearish divergence are not reversal patterns. I don't even use the words overbought or oversold. I call it overextended until I see a reversal pattern, either a negative or a positive that says something's turning higher. Um, here's the range rules. Most people are using 70 and 30. And when I met Wells, I said the 70 and 30 are nice, but people are by nature bullish. So we need to move it up to 80, which means we got to bring up the bottom to make it 40. And here's your values here for bull ranges and bear ranges. Here's the actual range rules that I put together. If you're in this 80, 40, that trend is up. When it breaks down below the 40 and then can't get back above 60, that's resistance. Now you're in a downtrend. Same thing in reversal pattern here, full range to a bear range. Now here's a bear range to a bull range. And when you're setting these, what I call my positive reversal targets, when it clears it, you know you're in that new range and you start drawing trend lines on your bar chart based on the RSI points. And I don't want to scare anybody or to hit you with too much at one time because my coursework, the basic each level is a 150 page manual that I have as a link that I can send out. And all the charts and di all the charts and diagrams are covering trend analysis, trend change, price forecasting, to where you can identify ranges. And this is acceleration. I put moving averages on my RSI. When I see my short-term moving average cross above 55 and then 60, I know we're in the start of the initial upside acceleration. When it crosses below the 40, then the downside acceleration. Because people see it sell off and they say, oh, there's a bullish divergence and it keeps going. First the RSI will drop below 40 and then this moving average will drop below 40. So for instance, you'll have in a, in a downtrend, you'll have a uh, range in the RSI that it will be uh, 60 to 30 or 20. 60 and it, to 20. It'll, and every time it goes to 60, that really is evidence of the, of the uh, top of the downtrend. It's sort of in a yeah, channel, like a rally downtrending phase. channel. Yeah, people taking profit, it rallies, and then it rallies yeah. in the previous resistance and rolls over and stays below 60. So when you get a situation where you go from a uh, downtrending uh, trend channel and a uh, downtrending uh, ratio in the RSI, and all of a sudden you climb above 60 in the RSI, uh, that's like a big wake up call that the trend is uh, likely reversing. Right. And I have price models that I teach too, and just like some people call them pivot points or swing points. But I'm watching to see that RSI turn up and if the RSI goes back above 60, then we have the signs that that last low may be an important low. But just because it goes all the way down, I've seen markets go down daily RSI like crude did, where it went negative, and the RSI went down below 20, went to 15 or 13. That's sure. just a momentum low. Right. That's not a bottom. It created a bullish divergence and rallied up near 60 and then rolled over again. So putting moving averages like I have for years uh, once I got a computer, it was like Christmas and my birthday all in one day because I could plot the bar charts, the RSI charts, put moving averages on them, see the range rules, everything. So in a minute here, we're going to actually see charts with these. Uh, 
Yeah, uh, I just wanted to show a couple applied, of these. Yeah. In here, bullish divergence is not reversal. And these negative reversal patterns help me set targets on the downside. There's one whole swing up, one whole swing down. And what these positives and negatives do help me forecast what the prices are going to be on the upside. So as long as I'm seeing positive reversals, trend is up, moving averages are up, I stay with it. And the range rules keep you focused because you can draw trend lines on the bar chart. The negatives, they trend change. Now we're setting objectives on the downside. So when you've had an RSI reading that goes upwards of like 80, uh, right, it's just well the above 60, time. and then you have a pullback in the RSI and it gets down to the bottom of your bullish range rules, you have a uh, circumstance where you're looking for a buying opportunity. Right. So you can manage the trade because you're seeing bearish divergence in these positive reversal patterns. And if you're in that acceleration phase with the RSI moving average short term and then longer term, they're crossing above 60. You're in a heck of a long, good long term trade like an Amazon, a Netflix, my favorite of Costco when it was down around $10 and it's now over 300. So it keeps you focused in the trend. The bull and bear divergences are truly not reversal patterns. Well, and I'll bet it's a real revelation to people to learn that there is a technique in RSI where they can do uh, price forecasting. Oh, yes. And the RSI does it. But when you look at other indicators, you may not be able to do it with like a stochastic or just because it holds at a Fibonacci level. The price, momentum, time, and sentiment will all come together at the same time. And another thing, Bruce, it works on all time frames. It works on all markets. I've got people trading Bitcoin. I've got people trading cattle, cotton, and currencies. So I don't change the RSI, and I created my own RSI, which I taught in the EDGE course, uh, that's a little bit more sensitive. And sometimes it will show a reversal pattern before the RSI does, and sometimes they both show it at the same time. So currently we're still in the uptrend in stocks. Gold had a nice run. We started buying gold back in March and silver and rode it all the way up over 20, uh, 2000 on gold and $30 on silver. Nice. So we'll, we'll look at a couple of charts and a couple of indices for how to use the range rules and how to use the moving average and uh, draw trend lines. Well, uh, so uh, it, let me know when you are done with your uh, uh, PowerPoint presentation. Well, and look, I will... That's all, I just wanted to include this so everybody mm -hmm. can see it. Yeah, wonderful, it's fantastic. And then we'll look at, we'll look at some charts. Okay, well, let's pause. Um, we're gonna pause here for a second so we can get a sip of coffee and also change screens, hold on. That was a great introduction, Andrew. Thank you so much. But now's when the fun begins because we get to look at charts. Now so, that's when I, my life begins at charts. Yeah, so we're both like really happy now, as is our viewers. So right. take it away. Show us what you got. All right, I want to show you as a couple charts of what we were talking about. Um, I don't know too many indicators that you can pull up other than a bar chart in RSI with a couple moving averages that will tell you so much and keep you in tune with markets, not get scared out of them. That's why I use the moving averages. That's why I use the range rules and the price forecasting tools with my positive and negative reversals to know there's an objective, the trend is just reversed. There's an objective in the future. And when it closes above it, help confirm it. I recently had a positive reversal show up in these in a daily Dow Jones, S&P, Russell, and we're hitting those targets now. So this trend is still up. There's been no evidence of real negatives except the short term hour or 30 minute chart. And it lasts for maybe a couple hours. And then by the end of the day, it's reversed higher. Now to my untrained RSI eye, I'm seeing here in this beautiful uptrend since, uh, or I guess this is weekly in the Dow, that we have mm -hmm. range rules where 40 is oversold here, and then Over you have upwards of 80. Right. 
So there's your range rules at work defining a beautiful uptrend. Well, even going back, if I go back a little more, you can go all the way back to the 90s and see where it stayed above 40. One big major pullback, and then it launched higher again, and then it started meeting resistance at 60. And this one went all the way down to um, 39, 36. So that big distributional top, using my Wyckoffian terms, yeah. showing that uh, uh, resistance at 60. So you actually had in the topping process a cap on the RSI around 60. Yeah. When it didn't go back above it, I said there's more downside to come. Yeah. And then when it went down, took care of that and got overextended, like I said, a bearish divergence or here a bullish divergence is not true until you start seeing the moving averages turn up and the objectives being hit getting above 60, which put you in here and gave you all this because it never really went that much below 40. Then it got all the way up to um, about 70, backed off to another low, stayed below 60. This is a weekly chart and the same thing on dailies. And if I switch to daily real quick, here's the daily from July, the low that was made back in earlier in the year that everybody thought was the end of the world. In um, when was that? December. Oh, you're, you're back to tw that's 2014 there. You need to yeah, just bring it to the present. Here. Do not attempt this at home. <laughs> I am a professional. <laughs> Okay, so you're now we get into, without a there you are. Yeah. So we had it all the way up to an RSI of 92 on the weekly. That was an epic buying climax. Yeah, and then after that, we had trouble getting back above 70. Oh. This was just momentum highs. And then we could not get back above 60, but we never broke below 40. That's all this activity. Then we made another one which was the high in 2000, the end of January, and led to that big December decline. Now, when I talk about drawing trend lines, here's a nice one. Came right back to it, launched higher, then it broke it. But the moving averages had started to roll over on a weekly chart. They went flat before that nine I use a simple nine on the R sign before it dropped. Took us all the way down to that low. But since then, um, let's see the daily now. Here's the February low of this year. Then the moving average is turned up. Here's the nine break in the 60. The nine moving average break in the 60. Say you're going into acceleration mode, upside acceleration, which we did. And we peaked in momentum again, but not until September. But you had all this that you could ride and say, I'm still with the trend, stay bullish. And we had a divergence, a shakeout, and we went down and tested those lows. This was one of my longer term positive patterns. Down here in the RSI, which when you draw your trend line, you come up to those two lows, now you're drawing a trend line based on a technical indicator and everybody would say, oh, the market's going down because it was breaking below 40, but it immediately reversed back up. Look where your trend line was drawn. So and you're drawing oh, that trend line off of your, the points on your RSI and you're finding those on the price chart right. and drawing your trend line. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's really clever. I try to create, when I started working with the RSI, all I had for 10 years was graph paper. And I would look at the price here on the deeper move in the RSI. It got more overextended, but the price was higher than before. So I basically just said, well, if that's overextended, the next high is gonna be above this in price. It took it a while, it hit it, sold off, turned up again, and that's put us up where we are now. Because we've achieved some uh, targets, some positive reversal targets off the daily and also off the weekly. So now we're back to testing that 60 level again. 
And every time there's negative news comes out, the market gets hit and then it turns around and comes back up. Now, what does that mean to you here that you have the Dow, which is, you know, flirting with its old highs. Right. And, and it's been really the laggard uh, in, index uh, for, compared to the others, but you, you see this, the RSI rallying up to 60. So are the range rules at work here? They are in the sense that we're still seeing this sell-off took it all the way down. The RSI went all the way down below 20. Mm -hmm. Then it came back up above 40. The moving averages had crossed and turned up. But the shorter term charts would have shown you it was overextended to the downside and was ready to rally again. Because when it turned up, all this activity here was above 40. Then you kicked in another positive. This was a dip that scared a lot of people because we had broken that. Now we're setting up for a bearish divergence, which is just an overextension. So we should set up for a short-term sell-off and then turn higher again. Interesting. Let me see. Um, let's look at the dollar. And it works, like I said, on all markets, all time frames. I even follow Bitcoin for some of my students. And most of my students are referred by previous students, so I don't. Um, okay, wait, wait, it's something I'm very happy with because I know I've made people help people to make money and stay focused on trends. Let's look at dollar index. Let's zoom out. Now this is daily. You see how it was all above 60, went all the way down, went up, made the high. Then it had trouble getting back above 60, which started that downtrend. So there's that distribution, classic distribution, and it's uh, staying below 60 while yeah, it's so, doing that, preparing so for a decline. Now that's the daily. If I had seen the 240 chart or 60 chart set a negative reversal, then I would have rejected, set a target on the downside that when it cleared it, it should accelerate. Well, when it cleared it, it accelerated, then another bounce, but both moving averages were down. And that point where the RSI moving average went below 40 said we're into acceleration. It went a little lower, a little bounce, and down. In fact, recently, um, back in September, I said we're about ready to start another leg down in the dollar. And I think it's going to continue. I think the inflation may be coming back or the dollar is going to go. The support I have is around 91 and a half. That low from uh, September, early September. I think we're going to take that out and keep going. Wow. Yeah, Let's, show us some more uh, markets that you're following. Uh, we're, uh, we want to get those soybeans. in with the time we have left. Good soybeans. Talk about a range shift. It was in wow. a downtrend. It went all the way down to 18 on the RSI, then a little bullish diversion set up, right, what they call a rising bottom, moving average cross, moving averages crossed here. So that bullish divergence that you had back in April of 20 for uh, soybeans was mm -hmm. meaningful to you. Oh, yes. And then when it could not get back below 40, I said, Katie, bar the door. Mm -hmm. We're probably going to 12 or $15 in soybeans. So as it was finishing its base, now I'm thinking as a white coffee, but it's finishing its base there, July, August. You can see that the that all it could do on the RSI was get down to the 40 level. So it's already in the um, uh, your rising uh, bullish brackets. Right, and this last pullback back yeah, in mm -hmm. August, I went to uh, 38. So 40, 60 and 20, 80 and 40 are not chiseled in stone, but it's going to tell you that something's getting ready to reverse. Right. Then we had well, a bearish, here's a bearish divergence in here. Everybody said, well, that moves over. Then it had another positive that suggested an even higher target, which we're achieving. Well, b back in September, when it got above 80 on the RSI in there, that was a real sign of strength. We actually call that a sign of strength in Wyckoff which yeah. to, to, you know, when we look going at going above 80, but going yeah. above 80, everybody starts selling and thinks they've caught the top. 
they think it's overbought, but but in your range rules, this is a really bullish thing. Yeah, and there's the right here, the arrow. Right here too, you see the moving average. Oh, I lost it. The moving average of RSI broke above 60, which says we're starting acceleration. So we knew that back in August. Then the moving average is on close and the moving average is on RSI were both positive, short term over longer term. Well, let me ask you this, because you had this really, you know, uh, positive sign of strength move where the RSI went above 80 back in, uh, in September, I guess it was. Does that automatically put you into uh, the alert for a buy opportunity on the next pullback? Pretty much, I say, okay, it's, I don't use all overbought. It's not truly overbought. No, 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 it's just the over, the overbought says when this pulls back again, Watch for uh, I'm going to be looking for an opportunity to get onto this uptrend. Right, because it's still there. Right. And using some of the drawing these trend lines, if this is going to be a positive with this point, what I call my positive reversals, then I can come in here, catch a low, draw a trend line. When we see this close and say, well, if that's a positive reversal, that trend line says we're going higher. It did, then it pulled back again, showed another positive. And look how the moving average nine stayed on close, stayed above the trend line that I drew not a subjectively objectively based on and little things like i say okay if this is the top this is top bottom resistance it should become support and it does both here and here and the trend lines there and a positive and the rsi was only down never went back below 50 and it led to this move so the fact that the RSI didn't get back below 50 was at a super positive in this oh, uptrend. Pretty much. And seeing the moving average is still positive and seeing the nine moving average on the RSI staying above 60. This is one of those where it pulls back, you, put, you get back in or add to, you can take a profit, partial profit, half of it, put it back on after a pullback. You made some cash for your account. Now you put another one back on because the major trend is still there. And you make two calls, one to place the order and one to call the golf course for a tea time. Because <laughs> okay, no listen, amount of Andrew, sitting, in front, sitting in front of that computer is gonna change the direction of the trend. Andrew, we only have about uh, 50 seconds left. And uh, so the thing here, I want everybody to know how to get a hold of you for uh, doing, uh, to get your course. Well, the, um, Trader 011, which is the international calling code at msn.com. My website address, Cardwell RSI Edge. I've been teaching for over 30 years. Uh, I've been using RSI for 40. And um, I'm offering some specials on the coursework. If you go to the website, I'm gonna do the full PowerPoint slide. It's about a one hour presentation I do with audio to go through each one of the slides. You can get me get a hold of me for that. And after 30 years of teaching, I'm pretty much ready to just focus on trading and starting my Cardwell RSI, all one word, trader diary notes for people that want to get my commentaries and what my thoughts are on the markets. Andrew, thank you so much. It's been great to have you here. And uh, we'll see you all again next time. Thanks, Andrew. Take care. It's always great to be with you. Hey, Grayson Rose here with Stock Charts. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, consider giving it a like down below. Maybe leave us a comment. And if you're new to the channel, you can subscribe at the link up above. We're gonna bring you daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial experts.